Yeah, this whole thing has been kind of a mess so far, but you know what? You kind of just have to do it. You no. Know? Right. To get through it. So. All right, so Alligator picks Yamato for his first pick, for his first game. Cyber picks Minoan. Okay. Right. To almost indisputably the best water sieve in the game. Yeah. Yeah, Mano with the cheaper boots. You made it with the stronger boots. <laughs> okay, yeah, and I'm guessing you're Gabe H C U O D. Yeah, that's me. Well, you're not Bubs. Right. I'm not. Okay, so I think we're all set then for the first game. The Yamato versus Minoans. If you, if you want to just hit the uh, ready button, we'll be ready to go. Uh, okay. Uh, you're going to co-op alligator? Oh, wasn't expecting that. All right, there we go. And your sieve. Oh, shit. I didn't even realize I wasn't spectator. That's all right. You were the same color as him, so he converted you to... You made a... Okay, there we go. Christ. Who the hell's this guy? Nobody. All right, great, let's go. Let's do this. Yes. Yamato versus Minoan. Good luck to both players. So both of these guys, very close in skill. Yeah, uh, I, I personally think Alligator's better. But they think Alligator's better? But I mean, they're from the same clan, so to speak. In the, in the, last, in the last tournament, Classic Cup, had a pretty close set. Three games, one, two, I think. Okay, so let's just go through these maps. We've got Alligator up there in the north around 12 o'clock. The Yamato, Iber Hobbit down in the south. Green is Minoan. So what do you think of these maps so far for each player? So, so far, I like, I like both of their maps. Uh, the one thing that's fantastic about Alligator's map is he's got four real close shorefish right to his TC. Uh, he's got some accessible shorefish for his wood as well, but the wood doesn't seem very strong. And he's going for an early gazelle push. And the reason why is probably because he wants to do a pit start. Iber, on the other hand, just decided to go with a granary start. He didn't really have any good options for a storage pit start. But he does have three shorefish along with a solid wood a little bit north of his town center. I see that too. I guess the problem with the shorefish up here at 12 o'clock is that the berries are blocking them. Right. Right. Yeah. Which is pretty unfortunate. Two hundred and fifty for each shorefish, so that's like a thousand food. Just sitting right there right next to his T C. And shorefish are the fastest food gathering source in the game, so mm. I'm sure he will want those at some point. But I, I do I think that sometimes a storage pit start on something like this, like pushing Gazelle to your T C may be a little ambitious, but he doesn't seem like he's behind He's only behind by like half a villager right now, and he's gonna have quicker wood, so I think that's more than worth it. Iver, on the other hand, also pushing his gazelle in. Okay. But I think Alligator's really gonna like this. He's got a lot of good shore fish just right below his storage pit as well that he can dock. He's got another three shore fish a little bit south and to the left of his town center. All in all, a really good map, except the wood is just a little uh, long and not wide, if that makes sense. Yep. I mean, I guess he, he will be safe from scout ships for at least a little bit here. I mean, it's the way his island is, I guess, in just in general, just very open. Yes. Unless he goes all the way back to uh, 12 o'clock back here, be open for alligator. Um... But both maps, solid amount of wood. Uh, both players' TCs are very close to the water. So I, I kind of expect this to go a little late. Just because of how far away the players are. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like right now, it looks like Hobbit is just a little bit ahead. So, uh, so it's, player six is green, right? 
Correct. Player seven purple. Yeah, so Iber is a little bit ahead. He's, a, he's about one villager ahead, if you look at the queue times. So he, right now he has the edge. I like this pretty nice storage pit. Um, yeah, I mean, these are going to be pretty slow in the early game. So oh, here we go. So here's a dock up. Four, that's a pretty early dock. Four minutes and 45. Alligator. That's that early oh, storage pit coming into play there. I gotta say, I do wish Ivor explored a little bit more of his island if he just would have looked a little bit north where his artifact is. Now he can oh, see the yeah. wood and the three shorefish. Yeah. That would have been prime for him to take, whereas the storage pit down here is only for wood. But I don't think it's going to make too big of a difference. He'll just eventually pit that closer to Tool mm -hmm. Age. But it may be... He may not be able to use the shorefish before boats come out and start contesting resources. But we'll see what happens. So this is interesting. So if Alligator looks like, if you look at his resources, he's got 8 on wood and 11 on food. What this tells me when I see something like this, it looks like he's going for like a fast bronze. Yeah. Or like, you know, there's two main strategies on islands, right? I mean, either you're going that whole 20 pop sea rush or you're doing something a little bit slower. Or you're trying to get a whole bunch of fishing boats out and you get a quick bronze off the back of it. For most players, I would assume they would do a 20 pop sea rush. I guess maybe because these guys are... So far away from each other, it would probably be better to just go for uh, maybe a slower build, more meticulous build. What do you think? I think Alligator's aim is to, well, he's still producing villagers, so I guess he is going, he is going to try and go for a quick bronze, or maybe just try and defend with a stronger eco than possibly out-pump Iber on the sea. But I think the best route is to get as many ships out as early as you can. Map control is everything with islands. I mean, somebody can bronze quickly and they won't be able to produce any boats if you have the map control. So, Alligator is sending out a little a ship to scout right now. Ivers got one dock up. I'm looking for a dock right now. It's like in the dead oh. center of the map. Yeah, it's quite a quite a bit of ways away from his economy. He's only... fish. Oh man, that's nice. Yeah, I see the villager now. Yep, up here, right in the center of the map. The biggest thing with the quick bronze, especially if somebody's going to be rushing, is you're going to have to spend 425 wood itself just to be able to click up the bronze, counting the barrack, market, archery range, whatever you plan on doing. It's, that's about three scout ships itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's good the that he's already got a second pit down. Wood should be pretty efficient. Okay, Iber once again just did not go for the shorefish. So he's he's going all in early C, and he's just aged this, up 840. It's pretty good. This is a sort of a limitation of the engine. I do wish we could see if we scouted if he scouted this or not. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think he did. He's building a dock right there now. So you're you're thinking he's going to just start pumping his ships. Yep. All right. So there we go. Already two scout ships about to pop out for Iber Hobbit, and Alligator is pretty defenseless. He's not even tool age yet. He has. I want to say just one dock. Mm -hmm. That's going to be about it. I mean, he might be in some trouble here. He's got 350 wood. Oh, he's got a whole lot. He's, oh, he's got a lot of wood. He's got like 430 wood. So he gets those docks up. He'll be able to get his defenses going here. Ivers uh, doing really well to get across that map to apply this early pressure. Oh, man. Oh, so he's not going to... I thought he was going to deny the dock there for a second, but it doesn't look like it. So what Alligator needs to do is gonna he needs to go ahead and start running his fishing boats. And honestly, he may want to place a dock all the way on the left side of his map to completely block that back part. Otherwise, he may have two storage pits denied. This is looking tough for tough for Gator so far. He's getting quite a bit of damage down, some idle time on his fishing boats. Definitely not a position I would want to be in. So Alligator has not dropped a barrack, so quick bronze is out of the question he's losing hp on his scout ships and he's got what 500 food sitting that he's not gonna be able to produce enough to use whereas hobbit has six on food and he's still producing villagers and he's just pumping army so i think ivor's in a really good spot here this is some good repair action going on too oh yeah this is looking really bad for for gator so far Oh, but see, this is what I was saying. I mean, I was talking to VNS Cool about this. He was telling me he thinks 20 pop sea rush is just the way to go. 
when you uh when you're doing one v one. Yeah, you just want to keep enough villagers on food to continue to produce villagers, and mm -hmm. otherwise you just want to just heavily invest everything in sea. I mean, once you win the sea, you can just go wild making fishing boats, and you've got control. Map control is extremely key for islands. And, and right now, I'm just looking here, so I guess Gator has, what, three scout ships? They're just sort of hanging around doing nothing at the bottom of uh, off the coast of Hobbit's Island. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what his game plan is here. He might be kind of in panic mode. I believe all he's trying to do right now is just to try and salvage his army and build it up. And he's just kind of trying to hide it right now. And the best thing he can maybe do is try and get a couple pickoffs with those with those boats to maybe relieve some pressure from his dock so he can continue to produce. But I mean, Hobbit's got he's got it locked down right now. And Hobbit decided to go ahead and research walls, and he's gonna do a little bit more early walling just in case he gets landed because he he knows that he's got the sea control he's he's got it pretty well so the only other move alligator can really do is either produce boats all the way in his back in which case alligator still doesn't have the map control or he transports so hobbit's going to go ahead and take that into consideration to try and get some more safety okay so this is interesting now so he's got a pretty decent alligator has a pretty decent amount of scout ships here. He has seven scout ships. Yamato scout ships. So he'll be able to take this fight down here, the Hobbit ships, and he'll be able to get some, take a pretty good fight here and take a lot of picks. Yeah, he's Although, that being said, no. That being said, I mean, uh, Hobbit has the reinforcements coming in. Very easy for him to just keep pumping ships when you're Minoan. Now that early eco is kind of out of the question, seeing as the Hobbit's just kind of overtaking the vill count. So what he's got to do here is really micro these repair villagers, try and keep these boats alive as long as he can. But Hobbit's not focused on the villagers. Yeah, so this is interesting. This is well, this is not very good for Gator. So he has 800 food, 10 on food, 10 villagers on food. He doesn't have so he has enough food to bronze, but he doesn't have. So he has to keep pumping out the ships if he wants to survive. So there's really no way he can take advantage. Ooh, all right. Now I see what he's doing. He's building a transport ship. Gator is building a transport ship. I see it. See what he does. Yeah, I think his game plan is maybe to the barracks up and just really catch him with a sneaky axe rush or something. You know, this is what I love about AOE One Islands: is a good landing can just totally just turn the tide of the game. There is no running away and hiding in your TC. You know, when the axemen are in your base, it's you don't have you don't react in time it's game over so what's also what's also really interesting is every single one of alligators golds are right on the shoreline so if he does want a bronze and maybe try and drop down some stables or some cavalry or really any kind of units because you made us just a gold sieve he's oh, not going to be able to <laughs> he's not going to be able to produce anything yeah i see exactly what you're talking about now if there's no way you could take any of these golds without being totally exposed and he dropped down an archery range, so I'm thinking whenever he does try and land, and he's he's gonna find a good landing spot at Ivers TC. All right, I'm looking for and I'm looking for the scout. Wait, so the, does he have? Has he loaded up the transport ship yet with villagers? Yeah, the villagers are dropped in Ivers TC. Oh yeah, I see it. He put down a uh, he put down a archery range right next to the TC. Let's see what Iber does. Is he? This is the thing. I mean. Is he paying attention or not? I mean, it would come as a pretty big surprise that right next to your town center, your villagers pop down and build a... Uh... Oh no, he definitely knows what's going on. He just built an archery range. Uh, he's not queuing up. Looks like he's not queuing up any... Um... Yeah, no, he is. He's queuing up two bowmen. So, okay, so here... Looks like Gator just hit bronze. He is taking gold. So, I'm thinking... Is he going to get a stable down or not? I'm not sure if Ivor has realized that every single one of those golds can be harassed. So this is going to be uh, this is going to be a little sticky for Ivor now. This is interesting. What is so, good is that he can he can wall he can just run, and he can wall everything off and still be technically safe unless that transport comes back around. But that's what he's got the scout ship around for. And he, he has massive superiority on C. 
He just took out one dock. He's going to take out another dock. He's about to hit bronze. He's very, very close. Unfortunately, it looks like he's lost access to his TC. Oh, man, that's... Pretty good play by Alligator, I gotta say. Keeping him in the game for longer. Things are looking up. Ivor's got a second storage pit. He just needs to take those villagers and move them. Instead of just getting peppered by damage. But maybe... Maybe he's gonna get a little scared seeing that Alligator is bronze. But what he really needs to do is just... Like I said, look at the golds. Look at the map. See what he can do. Yeah, all those places on the gold? Up there? Around 12 o'clock? All those villagers on the gold are vul are, vul are vulnerable. Oh yeah. It's, uh, you could pick off all of those. I don't think there's really any way that he could. I guess his priority right now is taking out these docks. So after he takes out this last this last dock, up in like uh, the western corner of Gators Island, I don't think he's. Oh, he's gonna have one more dock. That's it. Yeah, I don't know. I I think. I think Gator's offensive has fizzled, fizzled out. I think yeah, I agree. he's not going to do what he can do. Because if he tries to do anything cheeky, if Gator builds another transport and tries to do anything cheeky, I mean, Hobbit can just keep walling, you know, producing, and just, you know, with sea control, kind of all over, I would say. Yep, Ivor can still just fish out the sea as much as he possibly wants, and with Minoan, whenever he starts to get these copies out, those are going to be super deadly. Unless Alligator is going to be able to brute force his way in. I mean, he's got archers behind cavalry. He can break through walls. Dude, Ivor's just kind of getting cool. himself into a corner. And he may not have any safe gold. Well, he's he's got some at the shore. It can be harassed, but it's usable for now. Ivor's hey, already I'm... clicking up for improved bowmen. Both of them are going to go copies. Well, it looks like. And we can see back at Alligator's TC, he's finally using those shore fish. That's going to be a ton of food coming in. He's already got a government center, a second TC down. So he's going to be doing a little bit of a villager boom behind it. Yeah, I see that he's building. looks like he's building farms. So what is what I want to know is what is uh, Hobbit doing with... I guess he pulled all of his ships back to try and shut down this, this offensive. A gator. This is gonna get really problematic if he can't get this army out fast enough. He's done good to continue to try and wall and make himself safe, but I mean, one thing that could really turn the tide of this game. If you see up on the western corner, Gator's base, but as a scout ship, and all those shore fish that he's taking right there, if he could just take the use most of the scout ship and just move it up there, just sort of get on his nerves. Right. Push it a little bit, make him react. At least that, that's what I would do in this situation. A really big problem for Ivor right now that he has not noticed is that he's pretty heavily housed. So he's going to continue to lose ground. He's not really able to produce much army. It, it doesn't even seem like he's able to click up to uh, comp Composite Bowman. He's stuck on Improved. He doesn't have the resources to go up. And now these stone throwers are just going to start knocking down everything. This is not looking great for Ivor now. And right now we have 68 population, Gator, 51 for Ivor. So things have really turned around. I guess the harassment that he got in early just was not, not enough to stop Gator pushing in like this. But you know, this is what I love about AoE 1 Islands is, I mean, like I was just saying, a good landing can totally turn the tide of a game. And that, this game is a perfect example of that. Yeah, I really think Iber should really has like no reason as to why he didn't win this one. I think he should have had it. But hey, this is the thing I noticed with Iber. He's very strong in the early game. I noticed this again and again just watching him play. I mean, I think Magma was even saying once that Iber is a great wing player when you're playing four v four, but he's not really a great pocket player. And maybe this game is sort of an example of that. Because he, he did really well in the early game. There we go. He just... Yeah, he just GG'd. So that's game one. So typically, whenever you take the sea as quickly as Ivor did, you really want to stretch all your boats out along the shoreline. 
to see if anybody's trying to sneak any other docks to create army or somebody's trying to sneak a transport. Everything was just kind of concentrated in one spot. He was just shooting idly at the docks. So if he was able to stretch out, maybe he would have seen that dock off to the east and noticed the transport early and given him a couple more crucial seconds to prepare. But over, I mean, on top of everything, I think Alligator played that well along just because of the transport. I didn't like how his early game played out, but it ended up working for him. All right, so this is match point for Gator. Yeah, I just made, so what server did you use to make it? I, I just made another game and hosted it. Um, I'm not sure if you already have, but I just did. I'll just join you. Okay. It's called Fair of the Seas. Yeah. Uh, I usually just go US West. I just figured it was US East would be just good because both these guys, I think Gator is from Brazil, isn't he? And Hobbit is from Ivory Coast. I mean, typically, they usually go with whatever is closest to them, I think. Yeah, I'm not exactly right. sure where everybody yeah. lives currently. So we're still waiting on Gator. Yes. But yeah, I mean, with that last game, I mean, if he had spotted that transport ship and taken out those villagers, that would have made for a completely different game. Yeah, I can't read French, but he's, he's bringing that up now. <laughs> I'll be right back in just a moment. All right, so they need to send me what their next pick is. All right, Hobbit picks Hitzite. Very good Siv. Still waiting on Gator. So I am curious, I, I don't think I've ever seen you around. Where did this tournament come from? I've been playing this game for like 20 years, 22 years. I've been around forever. I've used different names. I mean, I used different names when I was a kid, but I mean, I just love this game. From time to time I come back, I just want to give back to the community. Islands is my favorite setting. So this is what I wanted to do. All right, so we have Karth versus Hitzite. <laughs> okay, yeah, we had we had another guy casting. Who uh, we had you fill in for. I mean. The thing is, is he just he wasn't aware that there was a time change. Who was the caster? Roberto, uh, 94. Mm. Start the game already. Well, we, we've got to keep things rolling here. Okay. Um, okay, so the Pittsite and Carthaginian, we're all set here. So let's just go ahead and start. You ready? Ready. Okay, what, let's go. What do you think about the Civ picks? Hittite so versus Karth for this game. I was thinking, uh, the thing about Hittite, my understanding is Hittite is really good when you have on a map like rivers or inland, when you have those narrow waterways, and you can get a lot more of your ships attacking at the same time. You know? 
In open waters like this, ships can close in. It float is easier for other ships to close in. But I mean, it's still a huge bonus. The the huge range on their ships. I mean, it definitely makes a very big difference. But I mean, I got to say, I would rather have Carthaginian. Just with with AOE with AOE one map gem, those fifty extra resources just makes such a huge difference when you're starting off and you're getting that. Um, trying to craft your Stone Age. It just makes things so much smoother. I, I think, in, what do you think? I mean, I think Carthagini is probably the way to go. I think there should be no way Hittite loses. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, you think the range in the ships make that much of a difference, even yeah. with no equal bonus? Yep. Yeah, the range on your ships means if there's any there's like a second layer of ships behind your ships those are also shooting whereas your opponent still only has the one layer which is massive in itself yeah i guess that's a good that's a good point because the thing is aside from the resource bonus the Ginians don't have any any other sort of bonus dock start for them alligator through, help them through the through the uh, the mid game but so let's talk about the maps i completely forgot about that um, so Alligator's already dropping a dock. That's the power of Karth, I guess. What Will he be able to sustain it, though? But, yeah. The maps... I think Alligator's got a better map. Just because he's got a little bit of access to Shorefish, along with wherever he decides to drop a pit. So, I think he decided to do that because his wood is close to his TC. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's gonna. There's not, there's not a whole lot of wood there that's gonna run out pretty quickly. But we'll see see what happens here. I mean, yep, he's already got a fishing boat out. He's not able to continuously produce. I mean, he needs to build another house. Let's see here. But we'll see. We'll see how this pays off. I mean, that's the Carthaginian bonus in action right there. It's so, definitely other, possible to pull it off. But see how it goes. overall, uh, the way that everybody's kind of situated with their starting TCs is there should be some some good early fighting, and probably only that left side is really going to be used, unless Hoppa decides to dock the right side, or is he? No, he's just going for the shorefish. That's five good shorefish, so that's going to be a <laughs> lot of food. Oh, there we go. That's really nice. That also means he'll be able to put more on wood just because of how fast shorefish gather. Less on food to kind of get the same result. So he can maybe stick another villager or two on wood for some earlier wood. If he's got four on wood, 13 on food. He's going for that 20 pop sea rush, but alligator is going for the same plan again. He's staying in Stone Age, building out more villagers and fishing boats, trying to get to play for the mid game here. We'll see if it works again. I mean, it worked out for him last time. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I am a little bit worried for Alligator. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm a big proponent in micromanaging your army and creating army is more important than economy especially in 1v1s but it seems like man if <laughs> if alligator wasn't still producing villagers he could even he'd probably click faster than hobbit with a bigger eco so this is i don't even think he has a oh now he's building a storage pit okay i mean they're dead so, even they may click at the same second they did same exact second, they're both going up. Alligator's got an extra 7 eco. That's completely ridiculous. Well, we'll see what happens here. I mean, he's going to have... Here, so he has one dock. What does... Does Hobbit have his dock up yet? I don't see it anywhere. Oh, so he has it down here. Yeah, all the way right on the south side. Back dab in the center of the map. So, I mean... If, if I was Alligator, I mean, I'd pull nearly everything off of food. Gazelles, berries, everything straight to wood. I mean, he's got his fishing boats that's going to collect his food so he can produce his villagers. Unless he tries to go for a cheeky bronze. But 
man. He has nine on wood, fifteen on food. He must be going for a bronze, right? I mean, why else would he be doing that? Yeah, it does seem like a bronze play. Still no barrack. Oh man, seven extra eco units. That's like a 50%, almost like a, well, it's like a 40% larger economy. Another dock. So it seems like he's just trying to play this and... He's not, he's dropping another pit, so there goes all of his wood. So yeah, he's definitely playing for tool. I guess he was thinking he didn't want to waste the rest of those gazelle, but I mean... Forget the gazelle, you've got a ton of sea. That's where your food is. And I, I honestly, I really like this build from Alligator. As long as it doesn't get trapped in there. But at the same time, Ivor's built on the complete opposite side of the map, so it shouldn't be an issue. I still think Alligator's got too much on food if he's going to play early large sea army. See, that's what I would think, right? You would think that he would pull at least, at least three more villagers off those berries, put them on wood, and most of those two storage pits. They're both... He's, he's building two scout ships right now. They both have two scout ships in queue. Don't think, do either of them have any popped already? All right, so Alligator has one, and it's heading towards Hobbit's base. It's moving, it's right around 12 o'clock, just south of 12 o'clock. It's going down south. Hobbit's got two of them creeping around the east side of Alligator's map, but he set them all the way down to 6 o'clock, so he had no idea where Alligator was. Yep. But They're the both thing. still just kind of looking right now. Yeah, they're both looking for the map. But I mean, Alligator has got such a massive economy. Yep, he's got 16 on wood and on food. Hobbit has 16 on wood and 6 on food. I mean, this is huge. All that food just sitting there, I, I can't stand it, personally. I mean, if if you've got that much, you might as well try and go for the bronze. I think so. 